Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn video. In this video we're going to be looking at how optical storage devices work. Okay, so the first question is what is an optical storage device? Well, an optical storage device is any device that uses light from a laser to read and write the information on the surface normally of a disc. And the most common examples are CDs, DVDs and Blu-ray discs. Now these are come in two main parts. You have the disc itself where all the data is stored and you have the drive that is the device that actually reads and writes that data. Uh, but more information on that in a while. So the next question of course uh, is what are the main components of an optical device? Before we can get into looking at how they actually work, let's have a look what they're made up of. So when you first get an optical device, when you look at it, you will see the enclosure, the tray, and probably the motor as well. So the drive enclosure is the physical structure that holds everything in place and protects all of the components. And this is, it also gives a secure mounting point so you can connect it to the computer if it's an internal device. Then you can see we've got the tray and there we go. And the idea of the tray is that's what holds the disc in place. So you place the CD or DVD onto the tray, it'll snap in place securely so that when, as it's spinning rather quickly, it won't move out of wobble or move out of place. Now spinning that disc itself is the job of the motor in specifically the spindle motor. And the spindle motor spins the CD or DVD very, very quickly, but it speeds it at a very controlled speed because it must contain, uh, must maintain a constant linear velocity as it is spinning and we'll have a look at that in a minute in a little bit more detail. Also as well as the spindle motor we also have the sled motor and the job of the sled motor is to move the optical unit uh, from the outside of the disc towards the center of the disc as it's spinning so that it can read all of the different portions of the disc. You'll notice as the uh, optical pickup unit moves towards the center, the disc rate at which it spins slows down. This is deliberate and that's because there's less do uh, data stored towards the center of the disc because you can't fit as much in there around the center. If you imagine just writing data with a pen around the, in a circle all around the middle, you're not gonna fit as much data in the middle as you are on the edges. So as it's reading, it has to slow down so that the rate at which the ones and zeros are being read slow down as well. Now, the, the device that controls all of this, the computer, little mini computer inside of the CD drive that controls this is the controller board. And the software or the, that actually controls it, or firmware in this instance, is located on this board as well. That's usually as embedded within there. And this manages all of the operation of the device. It manages the spinning of the motors, where it's going to go, controlling the optical unit, as well as error checking any data that's to be read or written and buffering data, storing it temporarily so that it can be sent on to the computer when the computer's ready to read the data. Now, the most important part itself, the optical disc. So the optical disc, this is usually a 12 centimeter circular disc and it's made up of plastic and below the plastic at the bottom is a metal layer, usually aluminum or gold or something. And that metal layer reflects back the light and it's within that layer that the data is stored. Now this data is stored as tiny little impressions in the disc surface. Pits are where the ones are stored and anything where data isn't stored is a flat or land as they are also called. Okay, and you can see it here. These, um, these pits and lands are incredibly small, incredibly small. And because of that, you can fit a huge amount of data onto the disks. And as you can see there, the ones and zeros are etched and have been shown above the pits and lands here. And you can see there on the surface, on a, on a whole CD, then all of the data is etched into pits and lands. And they're done in a series, normally in a series of concentric circles, with the most data being stored on the outside and the least data being stored on the inside. 
And there you can see it there. You can see very around towards the center, there are very few ones and zeros, but around the outside in the outer rings, there is a huge amount of, of ones and zeros. And that's why the disc needs to spin at a different speed. And the final component we want to look at is the optical pickup unit. Now this part of the drive, it consists of a number of smaller components, each that work together in order to do the really clever bit, which we'll look at in a moment and read the data or write it in fact. So the first component of the optical pickup unit is the laser diode. The job of the laser diode is to shine out the laser beam so that it can hit the surface of the disc. Now this on a CD drive, it uses an infrared laser. On a DVD, it uses a red laser. And on a Blu-ray, of course, it uses a blue-violet ray. And those will come in important later on when we talk about why blue uh, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays store different amounts of data. So the diode sends out the signal. Then that, get, that laser light gets guided through a beam splitter and some mirrors so that it got, starts heading towards the CD itself. It then hits an objective lens and the, the job of the objective lens is to focus that laser light onto a fine point on the disc. And once that laser light is bounced back, it then comes back through, back through the beam splitter and it hits a photodiode. And the photodiode detects the differences between the pits and the lands because the light intensity changes. And we'll look at a little bit more detail in a minute about exactly how that process works. So let's have a look at the process step by step. But before we do that, there's just one small other component in there. And those are the, fact the focus and tracking actuators. Uh, these are like tiny little motors that help focus the laser the objective lens focus the laser beam so that obviously when you place a cd in there it might not be sat exactly in the correct place so it might be a little bit higher or a little bit lower than it needs to be so that objective lens will be moved backwards or forwards or slightly so that it can focus better um, so that it's exactly on a point on the disc just like a digital camera focuses uh, when it you know when you go to take a picture so let's have a look. How does the optical pickup unit work? Well, let's have a look at that process. Uh, here we go, we've done a nice diagram. So the first thing that happens in step one is the disc is spun at a constant speed. So the CD starts spinning, ready to be read. Then what we do is the laser diode emits a beam of laser light, which goes out from the laser diode through the beam splitter and because it's coming out through the splitter, it goes straight across, hits the mirror, which then redirects it towards the CD. It goes through the objective lens, which then focuses the beam, the laser beam, onto a tiny little point on the CD. It then hits the CD and it bounces back, goes back through the lens, which then focuses it onto the mirror. This time when it hits the beam splitter, it, because it's coming the other way, it gets split and it goes 45 degrees. Instead of going through to the diode, it goes to the photodiode detector. And this reflective light is captured by the photodiode. The photodiode basically is a device that when laser light hits it, it generates a current. If a lot of light is hitting it, it generates a lot of current. If not a lot of light is hitting it, then it generates a tiny current. And this creates a pattern, a pulsing pattern, that can be detected by the controller board when those analog signals are passed through to it. Okay, and that's what happens. So the drive controller, it takes those signals of the, you know, the, the strong signals, the weak signals, which we'll look at how it makes those in a minute, and it then converts them from analog to digital, Perform some error correction in case the uh, CD is scratched or those sorts of things. And it once it's error corrected, it buffers it and sends it on to the computer for processing. Okay, good. So let's just review the optical reading process for those people that are doing the, the GCSE or other exam. So number one, you spin the disc, spin it up at a control speed. The speed depends on whether you're reading the inner side of the disc or the outer of the disc. A laser is then illuminated, infrared, red or blue, depending on the technology involved, which then shines through, bounces through all the components and hits the microscopic pits or flats. 
This is then reflected and the reflected light is detected by the photodiode, uh, um, which the pattern of pits uh, is reflected differently, creating a pattern of analog signals. And finally, that, that signal, that analog signal of the, uh, the, the, the current that's being generated, this analog is converted into digital, error corrected, buffered and sent on to the computer for processing. So what exactly happens when the laser hits the pits and the lands? How is it read? Because this part is an often misunderstood and oversimplified part. Okay, so let's have a look. So first of all, what happens when it hits a land? Well, the light comes out of the pickup unit and because it hits the flat surface of the land, it just bounces straight back. And you can see those transverse waves, those waves like normal ocean waves going along there. And because they bounce back straight from the surface, they're just going to be reflected. And because there's nothing interfering with it, then that will be a strong signal, steady signal picked up by that photodiode. And therefore, it won't register any pulses. It will just be a steady signal. Okay. Now let's have a look what happens when it hits a pit. Well, counterintuitively, pretty much the, the same thing happens. Yes, it's got to travel a little bit further. It's got to travel a quarter of a way uh, further out and a quarter of a way further back. But it still goes all the way back, landing on the optical pickup unit. So when it hits a pit, it also doesn't generate any kind of pulse, any signal that can be detected. Or certainly not any change of the signal that can be detected. So how exactly does it read the ones and the zeros? Well, the magic happens when it hits a transition point, because when the laser light is emitted from a transition point uh, on a trans exactly halfway, then half of the wave gets reflected straight away from the land. The other half has to go quarter of a wave down and a quarter of wave back up. So now as it travels back up, you'll see that it's half a wave behind. Now, two waves, when they're, in the, uh, when they're out of phase, when they're exactly half a wave opposite to each other, those two sides of the wave end up cancelling each other out through destructive interference. And it's this destructive interference that cancels the, pull, uh, cancels the, the laser, and therefore there's no signal coming through, and it produces a little pulse in the, electri uh, the electrical circuit, in the reading of it, and that pulse is detected, and it's the pulse on the transition point that is what is read. Now, what happens then is, as you can see here, every time the pulse is detected, then the ones and zeros are flipped. Okay, so we go zero, 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 and then as soon as it hits a pulse, it goes to a one. And as you can see, every time it flips over, it goes there. There we go, my little scratch animation there. So it goes along and then flips, zero, 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 flips onto a one. There we go. So you can see that. And this is why you need to make sure the, the CD, when it's spinning the CD, it needs to make sure that it's spinning at a constant speed for reading the ones and zeros. So that the pattern of ones and zeros that gets generated is generated exactly the right speed. because. If this was spinning too quickly on the inside, it would be moving from the pits and the flats too quickly, and therefore it won't be generating the same ones and zero pattern that mimics the actual pattern on the disk itself. There we go. Okay, so next thing, the last bit we need to cover here is why do CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays store different amounts of data? Well, let's have a look at that. So CDs, the original CDs, they used an infrared laser. And infrared lasers have a wavelength of 780 uh, nanometers, so, uh, which meant that the size of the pit and the flat had to be of a certain size, which meant that you could only store 700 megabytes. And that was because that wavelength was quite long. And if you look at the calculation for calculating the minimum spot size, you can see that the wavelength is on the top of the right hand side, which is that uh, lovely little symbol on the top. 
So if the wavelength is larger, then the diameter of the spot size is going to be larger. So that was the original, and that was using infrared light. So, and that was fine for CDs, but then as we wanted to store more information, such as movies, we needed a smaller spot size so that we could do smaller pits and flats, which meant that we're going to need a smaller wavelength, which is why we then converted to a DVD that uses the visible red spectrum light, which is a slightly shorter wavelength at 650 nanometers, which meant that it could then be uh, smaller spot sizes, which meant that, that you could increase the storage size from uh, 700 megabytes to 4.7 gigabytes. And finally, when we needed even more data being stored, then we needed to shift from a red light to a blue violet light, which had an even um, shorter wavelength, 405 nanometers, which meant that again, you could store even more information as you could then have a smaller spot size, which increased from 4.7 to 25 gigabytes. There were also some other technologies such as multi-layers and all those sorts of things where you can actually tweak the technology so you could get that even more than 25 gigabytes, but that's a little bit too much for this video. There you go. So that is how data is read from optical storage devices. And in the next video, we'll take a look at how data is written to those devices. So you can see how it's actually stored on those CDs or DVDs, either by the manufacturer or by the end user who are using it to back up their own data. Okay, thank you very much. And if you like the tutorial, then please do like and subscribe. Thank you very much.